Hello everybody, BubbleZest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we're going to be playing a Spain attempting to answer the question of what's the point of expanding Soviet aid. So, let's get started. First things first, let's create an intelligence agency. For research slots, it's standard electronics, industry and so on. For our sieves, uh, it's just going to be mill spam. For actual mills and dockyards, uh, we'll just spam weapons and convoys. The army, let's just gather it up and leave it on a full back line. I would exercise it, but we are actually going to lose all of these 17 divisions, so no need. For the air force, let's also gather it up, but this time we are going to exercise it. For the navy, uh, we'll just leave these two stacks as they are, but for these little ones, we'll put them together. There we go. And that is pretty much all of our prep out the way. So all that's left to do is our focus, the popular front, and go up to speed 5, and begin. And as normal, we're going to be going for the Guardia Civil. We get more stability and more units. These units being poorly trained is not a downside due to the way the Spanish Civil War works. They'll become trained very quickly. And right on time, it's the Spanish election of 1936. Now normally with this, I would start restart many times to try and get a good save. But here's what we're going to do a little different today. I'm going to start with the save and I'm going to finish with this save. Doesn't matter how many strike suppressions we get or how few states we get. I'm just going to see what happens. Now anyway, for the actual states that we have to control, we basically want to control all of them, including Western Aragon. We're going to lose many of the states that the nationalists will get from secure the northern garrisons, but we should be okay. But for the decisions right now, the only one we really can do is concessions to the left. Sometimes on videos, I will just do a save again and again and again, but I want to see what we'll get in terms of RNG today. So we might get an awful save, we might get a good one. But yes, RNG completely determines how good of a Spanish Civil War you'll get. Sometimes the Nationalists will spam assassinations, which means you can do political arrests. Sometimes they'll only do strike suppressions, which will completely screw you over. Uh, I would prefer if it's consistent, but this is what we have to deal with right now. And yes, for focus at this point, we're just going to be going all the way down to disband the army. We also always need enough political power to do one of these decisions, or we won't be able to get there on time. Finally, a political assassination. Good. Seriously, sometimes I feel like you need a calculator from the Spanish Civil War because you can calculate how much political power you'll get, how many decisions you can do, and so on. Like, for instance, right now I can actually do a decision in Guadalajara because I only need 10 political power to do a political arrest, so we may as well do that now, as we're already gaining a good amount of political power. And they're doing suede leader, leader loyalty, and that's going to get rid of the Gente Royal Lolt, which is kind of annoying because he's the best general the... Uh, Republicans have. But anyway, we can actually contest Seville right now. We're going to get 25 political power from this, so may as well. And the Nationalists have also chosen another political assassination. Very good. And that means another state expansion for us. So bad start with two strike suppressions, but it's been okay so far. Right now, we should probably try to get back Extremadura and Western Aragon. Western Aragon is almost vital for us because it's included within the focus to secure the northern garrisons for the Nationalists. If we control this state, it means that the Nationalists can't consolidate the Carlists and they will eventually rise up. It's a great backup plan to have. Honestly, you will not believe how many runs I've lost just because the Nationalists got one final tick back on Western Aragon. Because the problem is, we need all three ticks to control the state. Honestly, I'm surprised it took that long for Prima Dura Vera to show up. Now keep him in mind for your calculations, because he takes away 15 political power. We have exactly 29 days to go, so this is a very peculiar situation. I should probably go for one tick on Cordoba, so we actually have control of the state, and then try and get the final tick back on Seville. As long as there's no shenanigans, we should have an okay start. And it has begun. Now we have to choose which way we're going to go today. And I think we're going to go with the Second Republic. I haven't done that for a very long time, so it'll be interesting to play them again. Nine units in the north. Okay, let's put them on a fallback line like this. And we'll also immediately strengthen this, so we have more units up there. Anyway, how many units do we have down here? 60. Not bad. Let's also break off 10 and plan some naval invasions. Now yes, this will be a slightly different naval invasion than the Spanish Commune run, because I actually don't know where the units will be. But we should be alright. So it'll be a more traditional naval invasion, I suppose. So three apiece of these ones, but seven go into Galicia. 
This time I'm not going to be walking into Acheron, yeah? We don't have enough divisions for it this time. And there we go, something like this will do. And now with the remaining 50, let's break them up into three armies. Plop them on the front line. Of course though, we are going to have to pin these units out spawned behind us. That's alright. They shouldn't be able to hold too many of us behind. And of course, when the Soviets send their volunteers, they should be able to help. Now, the front line will be somewhere like this. Go to Akronia. We'll send one spy to Burgos and one spy there. Any benefit we can get is a good one. Similarly, assign the Air Force to whichever general. There they go. And may as well put the naval bombers in the Iberian coast. Alright, so who should we put as the field marshal? You know, let's put Jose here, because he's cheap. And the rest can be whoever. But we aren't going to use Enrique Lister or Yenaz Kilias as they will join the anarchists. So we're short to general. Hmm. Okay, I'll hire one. I can take that. <laughs> time to get started, I suppose. I haven't done a new Spain save in a long time, so it's going to be interesting to learn about this one. But some of the old things remain the same. Just walk forward, try and uh, exploit the gaps as we can. We've got a lot of work to do. I'm also going to pin this one in Pampelona. Make these ones move forward and enter Navarra. May as well try and take this tile, try and take Burgos. Anything that we can take at this stage of the war is unbelievably strong for us. And hey, we also have a lot of political power, so let's hire um, Juan de Grin and the army logistics expert. Not bad. But I think that's pretty much everything, so let's take the speed down a little and prepare to go. Everyone's on aggressive, activate the naval invasions. Also, cannot forget to be on strike force. In fact, actually, you go on convoy raiding. And at 5 o'clock, we railroad every unit. Thank you, Soviets. You're going to be vital today, as it's part of what we're exploring. You're going to have to be pins and counter pins to get into Burgos, which is unusual. It looks like we can encircle Salamanca and get into Valhalla droid easily. God, there's so much little pins to do. Like, I've got to pin this unit, this pin, pin is happening here, trying to create an encirclement, this one's walking forward. If you want to learn Micro in Hoi 4, I really recommend the Spanish Civil War. And I'm not joking, like it is ridiculous. But there we go. Encirclement and counter encirclement. This has been a pretty good start for us. And the front lines have solidified. So where are the Nashists going to do their first offensive? Because wherever they go, we have to kind of do the opposite. They chose Asturias up here. I'm going to take a chance on Burgos. Normally I'd do Salamanca, but honestly it doesn't look like Salamanca's the place today. And in an unusual reversal of fortunes, we actually get Palma de Mallorca for free. And Burgos is ours, perfect. That now makes the Nashus capital Acheronia. So yet again we're probably going to have a fight for the city, my favourite. Well hey, we got Vigo, very good, and then we'll try and link up these front lines, try and cut off Galicia. The volunteers are here, you can just see them. Oh, and aren't they always fun to deal with? Got another naval invasion ready, so I'll assign one unit there. Maybe we can try and trick the units out of La Coronia. I don't know. Oh dear, we just lost Oviedo because of the offensive they did there. That's annoying. Oh well, they did an offensive there, so that in theory means we can get it back. There we go, there's our first focus done. Right now we're going to work our way all the way down to relocate the gold reserves. So new leadership and the future of the Republic. Broken Oviedo, so we should be able to get that back. Nice, big encirclement, including the German volunteer. It's basically all encirclements right now. Oh hey, we took Salamanca on our own with no offensive. That's rare. I don't think I've ever done that. Alright, time for another offensive. Annoyingly, the logical place is Galicia, because Acronia is worth 5, while Pamplona is worth 1. So, time to get pushed back. And yet, even now, the AI doesn't bother leaving La Coronia. And now the Portuguese are here! Oh, isn't that glorious? Now I have even more units to flush out. Oh, finally La Coronia falls, but here's the problem. It's not enough. Now I'm going to have to try and send a crap ton of units to try and take Vigo. Well, at least we got La Coronia in the end. Come on, that should do it. Finally. Well, that was annoying, but alright. If I saved this save and improved it, I could probably take the date down, but for a save I have no knowledge about before going into it, I'd call that pretty good. But anyway, next up, we just wait for the Anarchists. 
And now, yes, I could reaffirm the popular front strategy and crush the revolution, but honestly, there's no need to. The only reason you do reaffirm the popular front strategy is to do anti-fascist unity. Do this if you need it, I say, but most of the time you don't need to do it. Anyway, let's offshore that gold. Relocate the gold reserves. And goodbye. I believe if you have any other volunteers from like Portugal or whatever, you do have the option of where you can ship them, but as default, they will always go to the Soviets. Anyway, at 3 o'clock, it's the Anarchists. We have a very weird spawn. They own much more than the Regional Defence Council of Aragon would ever control. If you don't know, this is Aragon, and they are mostly centred, from what I know, around Eastern Aragon. And even then, the shutting down of the Anarchists didn't result in this. But oh well, there are advantages to this for us, specifically leader grinding. So, who are we going to grind today? You know what, let's do one Medisto. Break him off, give him a few more units, and let's park him on the front line with the Anarchists. Of course, let's re-accept those volunteers from the Soviets. Perfect. And now let's do Expand Soviet Aid, also known as Selling Our Soul. That's kind of how it's meant to be, we're selling out to try and survive. There, we'll let the Anarchists entrench, allow us to gain Org, and when the time is right, we'll go after them. Don't really need to do offences right now. Now every once in a while, just tell your units to stop attacking, let them re-entrench, and then go again. Of course, though, you are at the mercy of the Soviets, who will do some attacking on their own. So, it's not entirely possible, but still, one Medisto is gaining traits fairly quickly. And there we go, we've done it. We now have access to this little branch. The main benefits here are actually Soviet weapon shipments and Soviet industrial aid. Two extra sieves and three extra mills for 35 days. That's very good. The other two aren't as good, but they're alright. The main problem is they only last as long as you are working with the Soviets. Honestly, I'd love to still have this national spirit around, but we're not going to have it for very long. How rude indeed. The Soviets just nicked our gold. Alright, so let's get some more production of artillery and support equipment. Probably should have shifted this around sooner, but better late than never. And is it time for theatre training? Of course it is. Shall we have a bit of fun? You know what? Let's petition for French aid. Never done that before. Don't think we'll get anything, because you know France, but I'm curious. There we go, Medisa has now reached organiser and infantry leader. Nice. So let's switch him out for the field marshal himself to properly grind him out too. Hey, industry boost. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Might want to save that to use on Dispersed or Concentrated 4. So, will the French choose to help us? How rude. How rude. Thanks, Leon Bloom. Reluctant Interventionist. Well, how about you actually give us some stuff? So, I'm going to do Ensure Loyalty. There we go, Organizer. So, there we go, much better. Alright, Medisa, get back to work. Just wanted to ensure Jose would get all the traits I wanted of him. And by that, I of course mean Logistics Wizard. We do not really have good high command, do we? So at least we can make these guys alright for once. Hmm, you know what, Jose, you can be an army offence expert. Disto, you could be an army regrouping specialist. And do we have an infantry guy? Surprisingly not, because he's locked behind the communists. So we might have to grind someone else out. Alright, Jose Maya, get to work. Grind yourself to level 4, and then we'll switch him back in. That is one change from NSB I am wholeheartedly in support of. Being able to make our own military high command really has changed the game. Weird, if this guy can be our Division of Triffian guy, why isn't he a general? Finally, the popular army. I'm actually going to save my XP, because we're about to get a Doctrine boost. And you are level 4, perfect. I'd say that's probably enough grinding and stuff. Let's finish this. Let's go for an Eastern Aragon offensive. That should split their front lines. And yet, of course, infantry specialist. There we go, we now have a pretty good high command. Infantry specialist, army regrouping, army offense. Well, that escalated quickly. We managed to cut off Western and Eastern Aragon, and we're at Barcelona. And the anarchists, for some reason, chose a Valencian offensive, which is just going to kick them out of there. Hmm, should I do another focus or just wait for us to burst into Barcelona? I think no need, yeah. And there we go, Republican victory in the Spanish Civil War. I haven't said that for a long time. 
And now, we become a puppet. This is the price of victory. Alright, let's plan our way out. We may as well take some little things right now. Soviet recovery aid, do we have to do that? Yes, yeah, so let's do that first. And this is what we're left with, 27 units. But they're pretty good units, if I don't say so myself. And we managed to do a lot of grinding. So despite becoming a puppet, I'd say this worked out well for us. Like I said, you could make it even better if you chose to do lend lease. But eh, like I said, decided to flip the script today. Nice, two doctrines. Oh dear. We do have a lot of cores, but we don't have much money. Yeah, I wouldn't get too excited about using this tree, because subvert Soviet control, which we will eventually have to do, will get rid of it. However, you can take advantage of it. You can eventually do things like collectivized industry and transport Soviet industry, four mills and four spits respectively. The problem is, you do eventually have to get out, because of course eventually the Soviets will go to war with ones like the Germans, and if you haven't done that by then, you'll be called into war with them too. But alright, I'm going to work our way down to War of Independence as soon as possible. So next up, oppose the Communists. Manuel Zana will be a figurehead president no more, he will become the Great Survivor. Oh, Stalin, you want to give us infantry equipment? And artillery? Oh, you shouldn't have. At least he's finally given us stuff. I am thinking about it. These three focuses given extra factories are useful, especially if you need to get now to restore higher education. But... I don't know. It honestly would be your choice in whether to do them or not. It would take at least a year to do them all. Because they're all 70 days. I don't know, should we modify the lease? I don't know. He seems very insistent. But anyway, time to subvert Soviet control. The thing that makes him realise, hmm, those Spaniards are up to something. Oh no. They know what we're up to, and now it's time for them to do a Catalan occupation zone? They've just taken parts of our country. Well, let's get on our future front line, why don't we? Totally for no reason whatsoever, though. Nothing to see here, Stalin. Nothing to see. Alright. Time for the Spanish War of Independence. Now, I think they can actually say yes to this and there won't be any war, but I have never actually seen it. Funnily enough, Soviet-controlled Catalan is not very defended, so this shouldn't take too long. Sorry, Stalin. It's not you. It's us. And what does he say? Well, that's a pretty stern response. But let's flush him out of Iberia as quickly as we can. The time is now. Next up, those who would not help us. And here's the little event that comes with it. Nice. We probably should rush to Valencia and Barcelona quickly. There aren't many units here, but they could definitely get more. You know, the funny thing is, now that Barcelona is their final port, we could just allow them to funnel units in it forever and then just completely destroy the Soviet army so that eventually Germany could walk over them easily. But, eh, not going to do that. But there's a little something you can think about. And just one little cavalry left. And that's that. We have flushed the Soviets out. And what can we do now? Nothing. No, seriously, nothing. How are we, with only 64 divisions, meant to take down the Soviet Union? We have no land board with them, we have nothing, and we can't piece them out. So to go back to the original question of what's the point of expanding Soviet aid? Well, it's alright, actually. The little bonuses of Soviet shipments and industrial aid are alright, you can eventually take advantage of, provide for the people if you really want to. But the main drawback, the main problem, and the main reason no one ever does this tree, is this perpetual war of the Soviet Union you will find yourself in. And it could be so much better with just one little change. One change! And that is to add a peace out event. Just like Ethiopia got a few months ago, give Spain an ability to peace out the Soviets once they kick them out of Iberia. And there you go. That means it's worth it after that. If Paradox added that, I think a lot of people would do this little tree, because it's alright, and it's actually quite interesting. Honestly, I would probably do it more, if they allowed us to peace out the Soviets. Because, why should I, after kicking them out of Iberia, have to wait perpetually forever for them to peace out? Our only option is potentially to help Germany once they do Barbarossa. For all you know, Germany might lose, you might be pushed all the way back to Iberia again, and at that point, you're still screwed. 
So at this point, you have nothing left. You're just in a perpetual war with the Soviet Union for no reason. And the best part is, it's technically considered an offensive war. Ain't that a doozy? So that means the Soviets get a defensive war buff that they don't really deserve. So it's a whole load of... Bleh. It's a lot better once you do it with the communists, because appeal for increased autonomy usually means you get your independence back. So at that point, you can take full advantage of this tree. But for the Republicans, especially the Republican AI, this is completely pointless right now. So yeah, this has been a, uh, an interesting little game for me, because like I said, I didn't restart this at all. This is the same save. I started this an hour or two ago, and I ran all the way through it. I don't know, just doing a different save does switch it up. Like how I did last week with the Spanish Commune with the Well I Didn't Vote For You save. So switching up these things is always a little bit of excitement for me. Because, you know, I play Spain a lot, have to make it a little bit more spicy for myself. However, until next time everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, answering the question of what's the point of expanding Soviet aid? I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments below, I'm always looking for new video ideas. However, until we meet again, I think I have to have a long talk with the Soviets. Maybe they'll eventually piece me out. I'm kidding, they never will. However, until we meet again, good bye.